Morning. We are staying on top of an attempted abduction in South Minneapolis. A man actually trying to take a little girl while she was playing with her friends at Lower Harriet Elementary Tuesday night. Luckily, that little girl got away. Yeah, the suspect is described as a white man, 50 to 60 years old, six feet tall and thin with a black beard that goes down to his chest. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to hear from police about four things that little girl did right to help her get away and what police are now asking parents to do this morning. Well, every year during the holidays, we get word of people sneaking up to homes and taking their packages. So what's different this year? Police are getting bolder and smarter about catching those thieves in the act. Kaya Edwards is live in St. Paul to show us what police there are doing for the first time and what you could do to help. Good morning, Kaya. Good morning. So St. Paul police have taken almost 200 reports of stolen packages so far this year. And so now they are giving bait boxes a try. Basically what they're doing is they're taking a box and they're putting dog poo inside. <laughs> Just kidding, just making sure you're paying attention. No, but what they're actually doing is putting those air pillows in and they're putting a GPS device inside, then leaving them on people's doorsteps to try to tempt thieves to take the boxes. And then with the GPS, they're able to track them and move in for an arrest. Now, uh, as you can see in this video here, the boxes do look legit. This one has Amazon labels and all. By the way, at this time last year, around this time, Edina police actually used a bait box and managed to catch a thief at, by using that. So as far as St. Paul goes, uh, police have not made any arrests yet with this tactic, uh, but that may be because it's only been two days since they started this. However, they have made arrests in other package theft cases where neighbors have shared information. We're really starting to see the um, frequency really kick up right about now. And uh, we're trying to get the word out there for people to, you know, to track your package, um, be available when it is delivered. Here's what else police say you can do. Have a neighbor collect your package for you. And on that note, watch out for your neighbor's deliveries too. Also, when you are ordering, you can select that a signature needs to be required in order for them to drop that package off. Alternatively, you could have your package delivered not to your house, but to your local UPS, USPS, or FedEx location. And finally, consider installing security cameras or at least post a security sign in your yard. Police say thieves do look out for those and it might be enough to scare them away. Now, as investi an investigator for this district says that since November, every week he's gotten 10 to 20 reports of stolen packages. So imagine how many more were not reported. Now, usually you just contact the company and request a new box, but police do want you to go ahead and make that report. Let them know it's been stolen so they can track this. And finally, um, if you do see a porch pirate in action, don't try to go after them. As always, call 911. Rena, back to you. All right, great information. Thank you, Kaya. We have some breaking news from overnight. At least seven people are dead and 43 hurt in Turkey after a high speed train hit a railway engine and then crashed into a pedestrian overpass. This is some brand new video from the scene at the train station in Ankara. We're told at least two cars derailed in the accident and parts of that overpass then collapsed onto the train. We'll, of course, keep you updated as more information comes in. Now here's your morning rush. Family and friends are mourning the loss of a St. Paul man who died two and a half weeks ago after an explosion destroyed his home. Just a, a very nice, warm person. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna miss him. We're really gonna miss him. John Lundell died in the hospital Tuesday night. First responders pulled Lundell from a pile of debris after his Payne Avenue home exploded the day after Thanksgiving. Investigators still don't know what caused that explosion. Right now, a student at Normandale Community College is behind bars. Bloomington police say he assaulted two staff members during a classroom argument. One of the teachers was taken to the hospital but is expected to be okay. Police say they found a gun in the student's backpack during his arrest. Opening today in Uptown, a second WeWork location in Minneapolis. The company specializes in shared workspaces where you can rent desks and offices. Its newest spot is on Lagoon Avenue and it's got offices on four floors. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry will be part of the ribbon cutting ceremony which takes place at 1030 this morning. 
All right, 606, time now for your digital dive. Here's a question. Could you live an entire year without your smartphone? Well, that's the challenge that Vitamin Water is putting out to all of us. So they want you to, to, to tell us how you would live that year because you could win $100,000 if you prove that you can do it. All you have to do is post on Instagram and Twitter uh, with the hashtag no phone for a year. So for example, Mitchell here says he is addicted to his smartphone and if, during that year, if he would take that year off, he would study more for college and then if he wins that prize, it would help him pay for college. This is a great post from a family who says that their boy is severely autistic, so if they would win the money, they would create a special sensory room in their house with a swing and a trampoline. Uh, some other opinions here. A lot about the money. Dan says, yeah, if I get the money up front, good luck with that one, Dan. Nah. <laughs> and uh, this one from Stevie, yeah, but I need the cash now. So, so Stevie, I say to you, so good luck with that. Uh, and Danny says, I don't know if I can, just being honest. And the last one here from Carlene, she says, absolutely I'd do it. I will go off the grid for sure. I have ways around this. I was born in 1978. I'm good. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> hey, I don't know. It would, I would be tough for me. As you pointed out, you know, I'm always out and about doing photography and stuff, so it would be hard for me. No, I think you'd be just fine. Yeah, I know. I, I need to not be on my phone as much. Yeah. I think we all oh, need to not be us. on our phone as much. I wonder how much. vitamin water is going to actually like, you know, make sure that they're not on their phone. They can't be around you every time. It must be the honor system. I don't know. Yeah, and then how do they or pick? assign someone to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. All right, Ellery, yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. Let's head over to Laura with the one thing we need to know about today's forecast. Out the door this morning, there's more fog. There's a little mist. We have flurries making their way in from the west. Uh, so overall, it's kind of a gray, another gloomy day out there. Be prepared for a beautiful sight though some hoarfrost potential all across southern Minnesota and skies will clear tonight today we'll top out at 35 degrees so there's a lot of sunshine in the forecast come tomorrow. Good stuff. All right, thanks. Well, hey, a man in western Wisconsin hoping to raise thousands of dollars in a marathon today, but he's not going to be doing any running. No, instead, Noah Wiedenfeld is ringing a Salvation Army bell for 26.2 hours, of course, representing the 26.2 miles that are in a marathon. Noah hopes to help the Salvation Army's Grace Place, a homeless shelter in New Richmond, to raise $80,000. Now, in addition to raising money for a good cause, Noah says he hopes to inspire others to give back with their time. We need more volunteers to help ring. Um, if uh, if I can ring for 26.2 hours, you can ring for one or two. <laughs> uh, whether it's with your family, some coworkers, friends, um, it's uh, a lot of fun and supports a great cause. What a sweet young man. If you want to help support Noah's ringing marathon, he'll be at the Walmart in New Richmond starting at 3 o'clock today. He says he will stay there until 5.12 on Friday night. That's going to be the 26.2 hours. It's a pretty specific time window there. It so. is. Pretty, yeah, go help him out though. Yeah. He needs all the money he can get. Yeah, Noah though says if he if it comes down and it's close and he's at 512 and he's real close to that $80,000 mark, he's actually going to stay and ring until they meet their goal. But what if he hits the goal beforehand? Oh, that he's going to go home? Keep going? I don't go know. Home? Let's see. I don't know. Okay, we'll have to wait and see. Dedication. Thanks, yeah. Well, it's not just men that are ringing bells this holiday season and women, we should say, but uh, Rashid's also getting into the spirit. The Fargo Police Department dispatches bomb robot this week to help the local Salvation Army. Plus, it let the public see the SWAT equipment in action. We get everything from people laugh at it. Uh, sometimes kids are a little afraid of it. Uh, but once they see what it is and they see it's uh, obviously just for fun, people usually approach it. It's a good conversation starter. The robot, of course, not doing all of the work. Off-duty officers volunteered at 19 different red kettle sites throughout the area. Good campaign there. Mm -hmm. We'll still ahead on Sunrise, a viral video that is, as Rena would say, oh, for cute. Did I do it right? <laughs> you did, yeah. Thank you, thank you. How Wisconsin <laughs> kindergartners are giving the world a lesson in kindness. For the record, it is for cute. For cute. Absolutely. For cute. Uh, so who was behind <laughs> the hack that targeted millions of Marriott hotel guests and why they may wait they might wait years before they use your information that they stole. And if you're just about to head out the door, it's 611 drive times looking good here around the Twin Cities Metro. If you're coming from Force Lake area down to 694, drive times about 12 minutes for 35W and 35E.